So we always talk about the must-have sewing tools and equipment that we need, the essentials kit that we love, that we use the most, but what about the sewing tools that we don't like? <laughs> yes, let's take a different look at the five must-have sewing tools that I personally, I don't like, I don't use, some I've never used, and definitely just do not have a place in my sewing world. Welcome back my sewing friends. It is delightful to see your smiling faces again. If you are in fact new here, welcome. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. My name is Evelyn Wood. I'm the creator of VintageSewingSchool.com and that's where I teach hundreds of students how to sew, how to take their sewing to the next level. And here on YouTube, there's hundreds of thousands of viewers that uh, have been watching and I have recommended many, many different sewing tools and equipment uh, over the years. But what about the sewing tools that I don't use? So you've likely seen this video where I did my top 10 sewing uh, tools and equipment that I personally use in my sewing equipment that I would not sew without, my personal essentials. And I mean, that's the thing. We're all different and we all have different tools, different systems, different methods that we like. And I always stress to my students, it's about finding your own set of tools, your own systems that work for you and work for you best. And so hopefully through this video, you can see why these specific tools I don't like, I don't use. They absolutely have zero place in my sewing room, <laughs> but it's not that these tools don't work or don't, I, that I don't recommend them. I actually do recommend a lot of these tools and you'll see um, in Vintage Sewing School, they're all on my recommended sewing tools lists, but it's that they just don't work for me and I don't like to personally use them. So uh, I hope this gives you some perspective on some pros and cons of different um, items and how you can start maybe looking at different things and realize you can start building your own personal sewing kit, just give you some more insights so you can build your own. So a lot of these are great, great tools, really great tools, and I recommend them. But for me, no, 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 no place in my sewing room whatsoever. Some I've actually never used. Number five, I've never used, and it might shock you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what's the first one? French curve. See, I don't even have these equipment here to show you them because I don't use them. So this isn't quite a dressmaker's uh, French curve. This is one of those mathematical ones that you find, but you still use one of these. So I don't use a French curve. I don't like to use it. I have one, not here with me, uh, but I haven't used it for a year. Haven't missed it at all. Um, I don't like it. So I find it very restrictive. This is for pattern making. Uh, you use it to get the actual, you know, you put it on and you find the right curve that you need to draw in lines on different shapes. You know, it is a great tool. I recommend it to all new pattern makers, all new sewists uh, starting out because usually it's really great, you know, because you've got a solid line to find. And if you're not very good at hand-eye coordination, this is what you want. But for me, no way. I hate using it. It is so restrictive to try and find the right curve and it's never the right curve that I want in the right amount. No way. I like to either use just freehand my curves or I use my ruler and just sort of um, curve it and move it as needed to get to get the line. So that's what I use. That's what I like. It allows me more freedom. And that is what I use. A French curve. Mm -mm, I don't use, but it might be really good for you. So do keep that in mind. Next one is Wonder Clips. Do you, do you know what they are? Maybe. So, uh, must have item to some people, some people not. So these, these little cl like plastic clips that you put and in lieu of pins of pinning your fabric pieces together, you put these little clips on. They're all the rage. I know a lot of people love them. Maybe you love them. I loathe them. I remember seeing these for the first time and just thinking, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, uh, for me personally, I like my pins. It's what I've always used. I'm used to it. So that's always a, st a start. But 
I want to, to pin exactly the spot that I want it to stay in place when I'm sewing. So I want to pin maybe this way, maybe this way, and I want the actual stitch line to stay in place. These clips only go on the very edge of the fabric at the side, so it's always, you're not actually holding your stitch line in place. And that's definitely going to move, and they actually will flip the fabric up because they create space, like, no. For me, no. I do get it. If you have, a, particularly if you have like res restricted movement in your hands, having the clips would be very useful. Things like quilting and things like that is probably more useful, but when you need to be really precise and accurate, and for me, it's going to be pins all of the way. But maybe you enjoy Wonder Clips. Maybe you're hearing about those ones for the first time. <laughs> but for me, absolutely, you're never going to get me to use those in my sewing routine. I'm sticking with my pins always. Okay, this is one that I recommend to new sewists all of the time, and that is the Textart style marker pens to mark in our fabric, notches, mark in all the things that we need on our um, fabric is these. A lot of them are water soluble or air soluble, and they're more like a texture. I don't like them. I don't use them. I don't want to <laughs> use them. I do have one. Oh, so why don't I like them? Well, they create these awful, like, giant texture marks all over your garment and it looks very scary like it's never going to come out and then sometimes it does come out the amount of students that I've had I've been sewing with and then you know you mark something with these and then you come back a day later whatever you know because it takes a long time to do things and the markings are gone they've disappeared on you because they do erase in air and water and if remember if you think water if you live somewhere humid uh, that might disappear on you too so i just i just don't like them uh personally i'm always going to use um taylor's chalk these ones here or a chalk pencil style they um they're easy to use for me at least and they stay on they're always going to be there and they just slow, gently wear away as you sort of make the garment and the first wash they're gone but they're always going to i that's what i like to use always why do i recommend these for beginners though well for one thing it's more comfortable in your hand so it feels like something that you're used to this does not feel like something that you're used to so it's really hard for beginners to kind of get this. Um, and the texture mark makes it really prominent, really visible for you to see your markings. So it is really good for beginners and why I recommend it. But me personally, no, I will not be using uh, these texture style markers anytime soon. I will be in love with my Taylor's chalk forever. Okay, <laughs> a seam gauge. Oh, I know this is a must have tool for a lot of people and I recommend it to a lot of people. But for me, no, 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 no. I don't like using this at all. Uh, I always use, as you know, this is part of my outfit. I always have my tape measure around my neck. And so I get one that starts from zero every time and I just get used to using this all the time. It's on me all the time. So what? I don't need to grab anything else. I already have my measuring device attached to me basically. <laughs> so I don't like to use a seam gauge. It's just, again, very restrictive. You have to keep adjusting it if you want different amounts and measuring it. Um, if you don't know what this is, you just set it to like this moves along and you set it to a, a measurement amount and then you can mark in um, lines. So it is a very useful tool and I do recommend it, as I said, uh, particularly for beginners because you can set, say, your seam allowance and if you want to mark in your seam allowances all the way down, it makes it really easy because then it's just there and you don't have to keep trying to like find the numbers on here when it's not very, you know, you're not used to looking at this. It can be quite easy, useful and really great to use. But for me personally, I don't want this in my sewing room. This only, I only have this because it came like as a little freebie it's not a very good one um, with a pack of other things sometimes so I'm always going to be my tape measure and I don't even have one of these to show you because I have never used a rotary cutter <laughs> I know a lot of you are just like what <laughs> I've never used one I don't have one let me tell you the story why I need some props though 
Okay, so I started sewing long, long ago, of course, and uh, these types of things weren't a thing back then. These, uh, I think these are really only sort of relatively new thing. They've probably been known to quilters for a long time, but sort of relatively new to, to home sewers. So I remember several years ago when they first started becoming really popular, the sort of the mats and the rotary cutters, um, they be started becoming popular for sewers, you know, and you see online all these things, and I was like, okay, I'll look into this. And so I had a look into it and this is what I found. So you have, you have to like, you use the little cutter device. Like, okay. So you sort of can curve around as, like, okay, that seems all right. And then you need a special mat, of course, because otherwise you're cutting into your table and terrible. So you need a mat. And I had a look at them all and the mats are about, you know, the size of a mouse pad. But then my patterns, I used to use a lot of vintage patterns. This is the size of my pattern. There is no way that this is going to work for me, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, of course, uh, there are bigger mats than this, I realize. And particularly now, there's even really giant ones that you can get. But back then, there wasn't those giant ones. But I just looked at this size of these mats and my patterns that I would use. And I was like, there's, there's, my cutting table was three meters long by one and a half meters wide. <laughs> like this is not going to work for me I don't think that uh, a rotary cutter is for me <laughs> and so I've never used one I always just use my dressmaker's shears and yeah I, that's definitely my routine and now I know a lot of people have trouble with different curves and getting into points with your rotary cutter it is restrictive but again it is one of those things that I do recommend on a, a sewing tools list because it might be for you particularly again if you're um, have a bit of um movement restriction in your hand the scissors can get quite heavy uh, and tiresome and maybe you're just not able to do it so it's definitely a rotary cutter is a good idea uh, there's definitely uh in the last little while i have thought about using one of these and i think it would be really good to use for uh cutting bias strips which is why it's mostly used for quilters right because they're just doing strips and strips and little squares and something like this big makes sense because you can just cut your little squares a fat quarter so to say and it works uh, for big dressmaking patterns mm. but uh, for doing bias strips I think it would be really useful and I have uh, considered potentially bringing one into my sewing space for that reason but that would be the only reason even if I had one I wouldn't use it for my dressmaking uh, anything other than straight lines for bias strips but I know a lot of people love the rotary cutter and that is what they use and absolutely love but there is no way I would want to cut out my patterns with that it just doesn't seem right at all I like my dressmaking shears so do you think that I'm totally crazy and not using these <laughs> sewing tools uh, let me know below I actually have down below in the description box a link to uh, other videos that I think you'll really enjoy on the tools that I do use an essentials tools kit and things that you want to upgrade to once you're past your sort of basic sewings as well so there's a, a bunch of videos there that I think you'll really enjoy but I also want to hear from you what sewing tools or equipment are just you just can't stand to use either. It's not that they're bad equipment, but it's just that they don't work for you. I would love to uh, hear those below. And remember, do read them all, uh, of course, all the, the comments down below because it might give you some insight into different tools and equipment, pros and cons for all the different types. So you can start building your own personal sewing kit that works for you because that's what it's all about. Remember, we all sew differently. So these were just ones that just don't work for me. I think this is going to be really fun to read through the comments. So until next time, happy sewing. Bye.